You are welcome to the first video of the course F5 Big IP DNS. In this section, I'm going to talk about DNS name resolution process, which is required to understand F5 Big IP DNS process. First, I will introduce different DNS record types, especially A record, C name record, MX record, and name server record. And then we will discuss how DNS servers use two methods, recursive and iterative, to resolve the names into IP addresses. To start DNS name resolution process, we first need to know how a single DNS server translates the name into an IP address through different record types. DNS name resolution uses different record types to translate the names into IP address. The record types store information about the domain name, such as IP address, alias, mail server, or name server. Suppose that we have a single domain with the name of raiko-co.com and a DNS server that is responsible for translating the names to IP addresses for that single domain name. DNS server contains various record types already created by administrators that help users find the corresponding IP address for each name or services in that domain. Type A, CNAME, MX, and NS records are not the only record types, but the most important ones that we will get to know in a little more details. A record is the main record type in DNS server and we can specify the corresponding IP address for each name, for example, to store the IP address of the names raikodashko.com or ftp.raikodashko.com you can use the record type A for each name in the domain let's check the IP address of some names in the domain raikodashko.com using nslookup tool I change the name server to 888 or any other name server through the Server command 8888 is a name server of the Google. Later we will discuss how the Google DNS server discovers the various DNS records through the DNS server responsible or authoritative for the domain raika-co.com. For example, ftp.raika-co.com or www.raika-co.com or raika-co.com you see all these records show the same IP address 172 and 104 and one IP version 6 address CNAME record is an alias or canonical for another name for example www.raika-co.com or mail.raika-co.com can be an alias for raika-co.com because the services run on the same server with the same IP address. Let's check the alias for mail.raika-co.com via NSLOOKUP. First, I change the type to CNAME and then for example mail.raika-co.com is an alias for raika-co.com since they are pointing to the same server with the same IP address. MX record returns the name of the mail servers associated to a domain name. It helps forward emails to the correct mail server. Again we can check the mail server of the domain raika-co.com using nslookup and mx record type with the command set type mx and then show me the mail servers related to or associated with the domain raika-co.com as you see it points to the name mail.raika-co.com and finally NS record or name server record which is the most important record 
to understand before we discuss DNS name resolution process. For every domain name, there is at least one DNS server that is responsible for all records associated with that domain name. They are called authoritative DNS server for that domain name. NS record allows us to determine the name or IP address of the name server authoritative or responsible for each domain name. Let's find out who is an authoritative DNS server or responsible for the domain roycodashco.com with NSLOOKUP with the type set type NS and roycodashco.com. The output shows that two name servers in Cloudflare are authoritative or responsible for resolving the names to IP addresses associated with the domain roycodashco.com. Of course, these are not the only record types in the name server, but they are as most important ones which make us ready to start discussing the name resolution process. As I've already discussed, there are many DNS servers in the world, each of which is responsible for one or more domain names. When we want to get an IP address from a domain name, we ask the authoritative DNS servers to provide the IP address that corresponds to the name. We want to get the IP address. But the question is, who knows the authoritative DNS server for each domain? name that is exactly what we are going to discuss there is a hierarchy of dns servers that help us to find out who is the authoritative dns server for each domain at the root of dns hierarchy are root dns servers which are 13 name servers the servers are spread all over the world and there is more than one physical server for each name. All DNS servers know the Anycast IP address of these 13 root DNS servers, which is embedded in the operating system. Root DNS servers know which name servers are responsible for top level domain name, such as .com, .net, .org, and .biz and all other top level domain names. At the second level of DNS hierarchy are top level DNS servers or TLD DNS servers. TLD name servers know who are authoritative name servers for each domain name. For example, TLD name server for .com know who are authoritative name servers for each domain in .com hierarchy or TLD name servers for .net know who are the authoritative name servers for each domain in .net hierarchy and finally at the third level or the lowest level of DNS hierarchy are authoritative DNS servers authoritative DNS servers are responsible for their own domain name and are the actual DNS servers that return the IP address of the required names. Every client at home in an enterprise or on the internet points to a DNS servers which is called a local DNS server or LDNS. This can be a corporate DNS server, an ISP DNS server, or a public DNS server like Google DNS server 8888. If you ask the local DNS server to resolve a name to an IP address, it will immediately respond to you if it is authoritative for that name. Otherwise, the local DNS server has to find the IP address for you. There are two methods by which a local DNS server can resolve a name to an IP address if it is not authoritative for that name and cannot also find 
the name in DNS cache. Recursive DNS resolution process or iterative DNS resolution process. With recursive DNS name resolution process, the client requests the local DNS server to resolve a name. The local DNS server delegates the task to another DNS server if it does not know the name and cannot find also in the cache. The second DNS server can also delegate the task to another DNS server. This process continues until a DNS server knows the name or can resolve it in a recursive or iterative method. In this method, it is enough to configure the IP address of the second DNS server in your local DNS server. For any name resolution request where the name is not known, the local DNS server forward the request to the second DNS server and wait for it to receive the IP address. In the iterative name resolution process, the local DNS server forward the request directly to root DNS server. The root DNS server does not know the name but returns the IP address or the name of the name server responsible for that top level domain name. For example, asking the root DNS server www.example.com will return the name of the DNS server responsible for top level domain.com. The local DNS server then asks the top level DNS server or TLD name server who is responsible for the top level domain name.com. The TLD name server does not know this, the answer but returns the name of the authoritative DNS server for that domain name. In our example, it returns the name of the authoritative DNS server for the domain example.com or roycard.co.com or any other domain name. Finally, we ask the authoritative DNS server to provide the IP address of the name www.roycard.co.com or www.example.com and it returns the IP address, the final IP address. The local DNS server then update the cache and also the client with the IP address of the requested name.